Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer, and welcome to Genre Benders, Obscurities, and Flawed Gems, where we look at the best stuff you've never heard of. I've often found myself faced with people who seem hell-bent on crushing my dreams. You know, the sort of people who say that pursuing a career in the arts is a Sisyphean task and it's very unrewarding, so you probably shouldn't even bother because you won't make it. Even though I've always known the people who say this are either bitter about not becoming famous or trying to prevent somebody else, possibly with more talent, from taking their jobs, as someone who has always suffered with self-esteem issues, these words have often cut me very deep and left me feeling very depressed. Lucky for me, I always have something to fall back on that gives me hope. The sort of thing I can take and rub in those people's faces while providing directions to the nearest ledge from which they can jump. Such a thing is Negadon, the monster from Mars. The world's first, and thus far only, completely CGI kaiju movie. Written, directed, and animated by Jun Awazu. Years ago, Dr. Ryuichi Narasaki was a very successful scientist, respected for his incredible intelligence and his contributions to the Mars terraforming project. But ever since the day his experimental mech Miroku 2 went haywire and killed his daughter Emmy, he has been reclusive and melancholy, putting all of his scientific pursuits behind him. When our story officially begins in the year 2025, a mysterious object found on Mars turns out to be a giant monster that, of course, arrives on Earth and starts ransacking Tokyo. When the military proves ineffective against the beast, Narasaki ends his self-imposed exile and reactivates the Moroku 2 in a last-ditch effort to save the world. So, if you haven't heard of Negadon the Monster from Mars before, that's understandable. Not only is it an indie project, but it was originally distributed by Central Park Media under their U.S. Manga Core division. CPM no longer exists, but back in the day, it was the company that got the anime series nobody else wanted to distribute. Most of which fit into one of two categories. Either I had no idea this existed, or I had no desire to know this existed. And they were the most prevalent distributors of hentai in the West, but we don't talk about that. Ever. The point is, I don't blame you if you don't know about Negadon, but that doesn't change the fact that you ought to know about it. Awazu has an intense passion for Kaiju Ega, and everything about the short reflects it. The whole thing is designed to feel like a Godzilla movie from the 60s, from the industrial aesthetic of the machines to the fact that outer space is blue instead of black. Even the fact that this is entirely CGI doesn't mean this aesthetic is lost on the monsters. The Moroku is designed to look like a suit that somebody could wear and perform in. And Negadon, despite his odd physiology, looks like a puppet that could be operated by strings. Even the city looks like the kind of model set Eiji Tsuburaya would be proud of. Please understand that I mean all of that in the best possible way, because it was clearly a deliberate aesthetic choice on Awazu's part. Negadon is a love letter to classic kaiju movies, and as such, it's loaded with references, and actually serves as a tutorial of how to do references properly. An unfortunate trend in recent media is to be obtrusive with references, doing them with a wink and a nudge to the camera, as if the filmmakers expect to be given a treat for being so clever. When really, they're not being clever so much as they're being distracting. Or confusing the definition of reference with the definition of joke. But that's a tale for another day. Awazu, meanwhile, fills Negadon with references that enhance the story, so that if you don't get them, they still have some sort of meaning. For example, Dr. Narasaki has only one eye. He lost it during the Moroku's malfunction, and it's since been replaced with a robotic eye. Now, if you're a die-hard kaiju fan like me, you probably made the connection that this is an homage to Dr. Daisuke Sarazawa from the original Godzilla, who also had only one eye. In fact, this is just one of many traits shared between the two characters. But if you didn't get that reference, the missing eye still has meaning. It's a constant reminder of the day his daughter died, something that cannot simply be brushed aside or ignored, but which he must be confronted with every time he sees his reflection. The fact that it's mechanical also holds weight, 
because it provides an ethereal connection between him and the Moroku, implying that he's not as done with it as he claims to be. He's tried to put science and technology behind him, and yet here is a machine embedded right in his skull that he needs to survive. Indeed, there is a lot of gravitas attached to this object. Then again, if that does nothing for you, here's a reference to Atragon where a giant robot fights a monster with a big honkin' drill. But even that is presented more as just a part of the machine than a clever reference. Nowhere in Negadon does Awazu overindulge in his references and homages, and the piece is stronger as a result. Since this is an animated film, I suppose it's only prudent that we talk about the animation. Awazu did this entirely by himself, and darn does it look amazing! It's not quite consistently photorealistic, but there are a lot of shots that come very, very close. Negadon and Miroku especially look great. Get this. According to the commentary track, Awazu was very disappointed in the way the CGI rain looked in the Matrix sequels. As I'm sure we all were. So, he would spend hours upon hours toiling at his computer making sure that his CGI rain would look better. Now that may seem like an unimportant thing to obsess over, but that attention to detail spreads into almost everything else in the movie. I say almost because of the four human characters, whose appearances seem to be dictated on their importance to the plot. Narasaki, as our lead, looks the best of the four. His hair is frazzled and gray, and his face is full of scars and wrinkles that make him look world-weary, but also make him look the most realistic. You could probably insert him into a photograph and trick a few people into thinking he's really there. His young army buddy, while still well done, is noticeably less detailed and looks more like he just stepped out of a Pixar movie. Emmy, who appears in flashbacks, looks kind of like a porcelain doll, which may have been deliberate, but I have no way to prove that. And the reporter looks like a latex puppet, and I highly doubt he has any anatomy below his shoulders. Regardless, though, Narasaki and the monsters are the focus, and they look so incredible that you can't really complain about anything else. Since we're discussing flaws, I should also mention that the English dub takes a couple of liberties, assuming that's the sort of thing that really bothers you. Certain lines are changed to sound more natural in English, and a few lines are added where originally there was silence. Be that as it may, it's still a well-acted dub, and the liberties taken do not change the intent of the dialogue. Now, my copy of Negadon is an original CPM release, but the license has been picked up by Manga Entertainment, who is also streaming it on YouTube, which means you can go and watch it when you're done listening to me rambling. I provided a link below. If you're wondering whether or not you should buy a copy, though, well, the answer is undeniably yes. For a relatively low price tag, you get all sorts of extra goodies. There's all sorts of behind-the-scenes content, including that aforementioned commentary track, two of Awazu's original kaiju animated shorts, which show just how far he's come, and even a fan art gallery, because why the heck not? My personal favorite extra, though, is this newspaper-style fold-out. It's all in Japanese, so I have no idea what it says, and I really wish I did. But check this out. These are cross-sections of Negadon and Moroku. That is all sorts of cool. That's the sort of thing right there that a kaiju fan like me lives for. And ultimately, I think that sums it up. Negadon the Monster from Mars is a celebration of kaiju movies and the people who love them. Sort of like a condensed Pacific Rim. Now let me tell you exactly why this movie gives me hope, in case it's not obvious yet. Here we have a half-hour feature that's essentially a fan film, done by one nobody from Japan, and not only did it get a fancy DVD release with international distribution, but it jump-started his career. He's done other stuff since this. 
His most recent film is a straight-up sci-fi pseudo-sequel called Planzet, which I have yet to see, but the trailers make it look really good. Ergo, anyone who says that it's impossible to make a career in the arts doesn't know Jack and should not be listened to, so don't let go of those dreams. Actually, not letting go of your dreams could easily be considered the central theme of this film, as it comes up several times. It almost feels like Awazu also had to deal with people telling him what he could not do his entire life, and this was his way of proving them wrong. Well, all I can say is congratulations. He did indeed prove them wrong, and hopefully the rest of us won't be too far behind. So, if you're a fan of Kaiju Ega and you have a half hour to spare, you need to watch Negadon the Monster from Mars. Trust me, you will not regret it. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. Yoshizawa, someday you're going to forget me, but please don't ever forget your dream.